Alright, I'm going live. everybody, this is Queen Week Editor Charles Morgan, and it's November 3rd, 2020. And I figured since there was probably nothing going on in America today, I would take a few uh, moments after the uh, office was wrapping up for the day's news posting to go over a really cool auction that Stax Bowers is uh, going to conduct tomorrow. You can go to Stax Bowers' website or look at any of the lots that I'm going to discuss today by looking in the description of this stream. As you know, the Coin Week Streaming News is brought to you by our friends at NGC. Uh, you can visit ngccoin.com uh, to look at their current grading specials and learn how you can submit your coins. Now, uh, normally when, uh, you know, uh, auctions taking place, we look at rare coins, high condition uh, coins, uh, uh, valuable coins. And in this case, every single lot I'm going to describe is uh, affordable to most uh, people who are tuning in and watching this stream. Uh, this is actually uh, probably the quintessential uh, low ball set of uh, coins uh, and it's been assembled by one of the top names in the numismatic hobby, Bill. Phoebus, who you probably know from the Cherry Pickers Guide. So uh, these coins range from gray to uh, from uh, uh, poor one to uh, fair two. I don't even know if there's anything as high as an AG3 amongst them. But there's some very cool coins that you usually don't find in this low of a grade. And they've all been certified, so uh, these are pro uh, more or less... Uh, 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 coins that have not been, you know, damaged other than their wear. I'm sure many of these were pocket pieces, but uh, these are uh, collected in their own right. And I will go through them and tell you little bits of uh, trivia or, or information I know about each of these coins uh, to get you uh, in the mood to bid and uh, hand, uh, hand bill your money as he uh, lets go of this collection, which uh, took him many years to build. So here we go. The first coin... Uh, this is lot 92001. Again, this is a Stax Bowers auction. Uh, and this is a New York 1837 Feuchtwanger cent made of German silver and poor one. So Dr. Louis Feuchtwanger, he wrote a book. Uh, it's a rather lengthy title, A Popular Treatise on Gems in reference to their scientific value a guide for the teacher of natural sciences, the lapidary jeweler and amateur, together with the description of elements of mineralogy and all ornamental and architectural materials. That's uh, not going to be the only lengthy tongue twister for me today. Uh, so anyway, Feuchtwanger writes this uh, book about 30 years after this uh, initiative he had where he's trying to convince the mint to use this metal alloy, which is uh, kind of similar to nickel, uh, but it's uh, made of 53% copper, 29% zinc, 18% nickel, and uh, it's uh, uh, also uh, known as uh, German silver argentan. So Mint Director Robert Patterson objected to the use of it as a coining metal uh, due to what he felt was the presence of cobalt and various degrees of arsenic and iron. So the coin was never actually adopted. The coin metal was never adopted by the mint. But uh, but uh, U.S. coin collectors do collect these. And they come in a number of denominations, and this is the one cent piece. Moving on. Uh, also, by the way, I, I have the screens loaded up. Current bid on this uh, coin is $190. Moving on to the second coin in the set. Uh, and th these are just the highlights. Uh, he has an entire typeset. This is a 1795 Liberty Cap Cent with a lettered edge, 
in pour one and you can see the date and the cap and the outline of liberty and practically nothing on the reverse uh so uh there are 203,033 uh, uh i'm sorry uh, that's a that's the uh, that's a different denomination. So when it comes to the cap set, uh, the 1795 uh, were uh, Joseph Wright's uh, dies, uh, which were uh, used at the beginning of 1794, uh, and after Wright's death, uh, Robert Scott created new dies. Uh, the Scott dies are known as the head of 1794, and the Wright dies are known as the head of 1793. So this is uh, uh, this is going to be the later the 1794 head. And uh, so this, uh, this coin is a uh, highly collectible, uh, a chance to get an 18th century uh, cent. And right now the current bid's $190. So if you were to try to get one of these in fair, I mean, uh, good or very good or, uh, or higher than that, you're paying hundreds uh, up to $1,000. So right now it's a very affordable opportunity uh, for you. Uh, moving on to the next coin on the list, uh, and that was the half dollar. I sort of skipped ahead of myself. The 1795 flowing hair half dollar with two leaves uh, variety, which is amazing, you can tell, uh, and fair too. Uh, and on this issue, as I was uh, saying, 203,033. Uh, uh, dang it, that is, uh, that's my notes for dollars. So uh, anyway, <laughs> this is a live program. Uh, so anyway, this is a, a half dollar from 1795, $380. Uh, and there's, uh, there's uh, two leaves and three leaf varieties. Uh, but here's your chance uh, to get this uh, half dollar variety uh, at Bill's uh, auction. Uh, moving on. <laughs> and we're uh, getting even worse. This is a practically illegible coin, uh, 1799 Drake bust silver dollar. Okay, so uh, these were designed by artist Gilbert Stewart with dies engraved by Robert Scott. Uh, so uh, the story behind this design is in August 1795, Stewart submitted his design to the Mint after suggesting to President Washington that he can improve the look of U.S. coinage. Uh, in September 1795, Scott finished the Drake bust dies and uh, delivered them. So you have Liberty uh, facing there, and uh, you can uh, barely make out anything with her. Um, and uh, the reverse is uh, completely uh, gone, which would have had a heraldic eagle design. Uh, so for the 1799 issue, you had about 22 die pairings. Uh, good luck figuring out which one this is. And about 400,000 struck. Uh, interestingly, uh, I believe all of the uh, coins here were struck using repurposed French crowns. Uh, so uh, the United States, uh, Bank of the United States made 10 deposits of 40,000 uh, crowns through 1799. And that's how these coins were struck. And like I said, forget the 13 star or 15 star reverse. This is the no star, <laughs> no reverse reverse. All right, and the current bid uh, on this at the moment is $380, which is a lot of money for like a washer. Moving on, we have the 1860O Liberty Seated Dollar. Okay, so uh, this is uh, right on the cusp of the Civil War, uh, and uh, this has that... Uh, sort of a, a nice gold color for its, its age. It's patinated. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, one of the last New Orleans Mint issues um, in the uh, antebellum period. Uh, and uh, this coin right now has a bid. Uh, let me see. Let's see what the current bid is. Uh, current bid on this coin is one hundred and forty dollars. Okay, moving ahead, we got lot nine two zero seven six. Everyone should recognize this, and this kind of shows you what the relief of the high relief piece dollar was like, uh, because you can sort of see the dish still on the obverse at least. Uh, and so this is the high relief and poor one, the piece dollar. Um, was struck between 1921 and 1935. Uh, so this replaced the long 
out of production Morgan dollar. Well, of course, the Morgan came back in 21. But uh, the uh, bill to authorize a change in design was introduced in Congress in May uh, 1921 by Albert Henry Vestal, a Republican uh, from Indiana, who was the chairman of the House Committee on Coinage. Uh, Senate bill followed. Uh, and uh, when we get to uh, December is when the coins uh, go into uh, the final selection process. Herbert Hoover, who was president at the time, uh, chose D. Francisky's design. So uh, the 1921s were made right at the end of the year, probably with dyes prepared the week before Christmas. And the totality of the mintage, so about a million coins, were struck between December 26th and December 31st, and the coin was released to into circulation on January 1922. President Hardy got the first coin. So the current bid on this well-worn specimen is $200. All right, now we've seen some classic silver, some classic copper. Uh, something you don't see very often, however, is classic gold worn down this low. So this is an 1836 classic head half eagle in fair two. This is lot number 92084. And uh, with this, uh, this coin here, you have uh, essentially in 1836, there can be nine different die pairs uh, you have the block eight, the large five, with the large closed eight in the second head. I really can't tell for sure which uh, dive variety this is with everything being so uh, worn down. Uh, the design was by William Meese, uh, and uh, it was also struck in the Charlotte and Dahlonega Mints in 1838, which would happen two years after this was struck, this design. Uh, and the redesign corresponded with the change of weight. Uh, the Act of June 18, 1834 reduced the weight of the half eagle to uh, from 8.75 to 8.34 grams. So uh, this is a, a really, a really cool. Um, there's a, uh, uh, for every, uh, this is a neat thing. And I don't know if you can tell the coin is worn as it is, but for every four reads on a Philly strike, the uh, Charlotte and Dahlonega issues have three. So there is a, a little bit of a difference, differentiation there. And it's a good way to spot whether the coin is uh, authentic. Moving on, we have the 1855 uh, Liberty uh, Head Eagle in Fair 2. Uh, the Liberty Head Eagle was struck uh, for circulation uh, it, starting in 1838. It was the first eagle in production since 1804 when uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, put the kibosh on the denomination because they were all being exported. Uh, the weight and diameter of the denomination was reduced from 17.5 grams to 16.718 and from 33 millimeters to 27 millimeters. That's why they call the uh, older ones the big the big tens. Uh, the obverse, of course, features uh, the bust of Liberty facing left, the date below the bust truncation, stars around, and there's a, a sort of a heraldic eagle on the reverse, which in this example is almost entirely gone. You can only make out, I, I guess you probably can make out all the stars, but it's hard to say based on the picture. Of course, you see that uh, slanted 55 uh, on this uh, example. Here, there are 121,701 struck. MS64 Plus is the finest, and this is by no means anywhere close to that. Uh, the current bid on this beauty is $800, uh, which probably isn't too far off from its basal value at the moment. Let's move on and on, and we have one more for you, folks. And this is lot 920 s If you collect uh, commemorative coins, uh, this is a, an extra notch for you. Uh, he has several very worn commemorative coins. I know people trying to put together circ commemorative sets uh, uh, because uh, you know many of them were released to general collectors. Uh, you definitely don't want to miss opportunities on some designs. There's a Huguenot uh, coin. Uh, there's a Monroe and others. Uh, in uh, FIBA's uh, worst type set. Uh, when it comes to the uh, Lafayette dollar here, it's uh, in fair two. Uh, and this is the first uh, commemorative dollar coin uh, for the United States. It uh, features uh, the Jugate bust portraiture 
of uh, George Washington and uh, Marie Joseph Paul Yves Roche Gilbert du Motier de Marquis de Lafayette, which is uh, usually truncated for school children to just plain old Lafayette. This coin was authorized by an act of Congress dated March 3, 1899, with proceeds from the sale of the coin going to build the Lafayette Memorial uh, Monument, which was put in the uh, Palace du Carousel, which is adjacent to the Louvre in Paris, and you can still see it. Um, the Horse Mounted General, uh, according to a numismatist article, uh, published in 1909, just a few years after its release, said actually that the horse in Lafayette is the obverse. Um, I'll leave that up to uh, other people to decide. Um, but anyway, here you have it. Uh, so this is just, uh, in general, a really cool and interesting set of coins. Of course, uh, you know, if you want higher end coins, there are going to be some in that auction. Uh, again, it goes down tomorrow. But if you lowball collectors out there are trying to fill some holes, uh, literally, uh, this is a good chance to pick some up and get that great Bill Phoebus pedigree. And I'm sure Bill would be happy to tell you uh, in an email or if you see him again at a coin show a little bit about uh, how he put the set together and why he chose some of these coins. So anyway, I hope you guys have a, a nice early night uh, free of stress and anxiety uh, uh, for no reason whatsoever other than it's November 3rd. And uh, we'll see you uh, later this week with another Coin Week podcast. For Coin Week, I'm editor Charles Morgan. Until next time, happy collecting.